Second, another horn. Look at verses 9 through 11. Out of them came another horn, which started small, but grew in power to the south and to the east and toward a beautiful land. It grew until it reached the host of the heavens, and it threw some of the starry host down to the earth and trampled on them. It set itself up to be as great as the prince of the host. It took away the daily sacrifice from him, and the place of his sanctuary was brought low. Here, as we see the interpretation in verses 24 and 25, the beautiful land refers to Israel, or more specifically, Jerusalem. And the host of heavens refers to the worshipers of God, the saints, the, the Jewish uh, uh, believers. And uh, the starry host refers to the spiritual leader, uh, leaders there. In God's eyes, all those kingdoms are nothing but beasts, and all their kings, great, and great or small, are nothing but just horns. <laughs> but his worshippers are the host of the heaven. And the spiritual leaders, the starry hosts. Wow, this is how God sees his worshipers. Maybe our church, the beautiful land. <laughs> wow. And then all of you, wow, the host of the heavens here on earth. Wow. And then, as you grow as leaders for God's kingdom work, for God's flock, starry host. Indeed, in the book of Revelation, Jesus describes the, the, uh, the, the servants of God as the stars in his hand. The starry host. The God's servants as a starry host. We can have great pride. This is how God sees us. And with such great things, we can really love him all the more. This vision talks about the persecution on the Jews. Here another horn refers to Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes. He reigned uh, in uh, Syria the, as a, a king uh, from 175 to 164 BC. So, now we are talking about the second century before Christ. The ram, the sixth century before Christ, the, from sixth to the fourth century. And then the, uh, Alexander the Great, the shaggy goat, uh, the, that was uh, maybe about 13 years uh, period, Alexander the Great, uh, the Greek Empire. Uh, in fourth century, about just 13 years. And after that, the four kingdoms began. And then uh, it came to now uh, second century uh, uh, before Christ, uh, 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 Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes. He was the eighth ruler of the Seleucid Empire. In 170 BC, Antioch, uh, Antiochus uh, uh, attacked uh, Egypt and captured all but Alexandria and also uh, King uh, Ptolemy VI. But he was afraid of, of alarming the Roman Empire. If he killed the, uh, the King uh, Ptolemy, and then he became the king of both uh, Egypt and Syria, he would be considered as a great threat to the Roman Empire. So he was afraid of, he did not want to alarm uh, the Roman Empire. So he let uh, the King Ptolemy uh, rule uh, uh, Egypt continue. He just took some treasures and went back home. Two years later in 168 BC, he attacked uh, uh, Egypt again. But this time he was stopped by uh, one aged uh, uh, Roman ambassador named Gaius. 
in Alexandria, Gaius, all alone, stopped him. And then he uh, uh, asked him to withdraw, withdraw immediately. Uh, otherwise, the uh, Roman uh, Empire would uh, consider it as the declaration of war. At this, Antiochus said, let me discuss with my generals. Then that aged man with his uh, the stick just uh, drew a circle around uh, him and said, before you come out of uh, this circle, you must uh, give me your answer. Otherwise, I would consider it as the declaration of war against the Roman Empire. It was really humiliating. But Antiochus could not help. He withdrew the army. While Antiochus was busy in Egypt this way, the rumor uh, spread in Israel that uh, Antiochus uh, had been killed in Egypt. Before this, when Antiochus was uh, uh, the, uh, in 175 BC, when he was uh, enthroned, Jason, uh, a Jewish priest, uh, visited him and offered him uh, a lot of money, uh, asking him for uh, the high priest uh, position. Uh, with a promise that if he gave him that position, he would uh, pay him the same amount of money every year. And Taiku said, sounds good. So he accepted. So Jason became the high priest. And then in 172 BC, he sent, uh, every year he sent uh, money. Now in 172 BC, he sent uh, his official named Menelaus uh, to uh, Antiochus uh, in Syria to pay the money. But when uh, Menelaus had a chance to meet the king uh, Antiochus, he offered him more money. The three times than Antiochus paid, uh, saying, uh, 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 suggesting that he would pay this uh, uh, amount of money every year. At this, Antiochus said, sounds good. So Menelaus came back and kicked out uh, Jason, and he became the high priest. In those days, the high priest position was not only religious, but also political and judicial. Yeah, it was like, uh, the position was like the governor's position. The priests were so corrupt this way. Then uh, about uh, when the priests were like this, then we can understand uh, the, the, these uh, priests later uh, in the uh, became the Sadducees. And uh, that's why when Jesus came and uh, uh, revealed himself as the Son of God, all these uh, corrupt uh, religious leaders hated him and killed him. Then the uh, some people, uh, when the mainstream uh, uh, worship uh, was a crop this way, some people just focused on Bible study and living according to God's laws uh, all by themselves. These people became the Pharisees. And then some people were sick and tired of all this crop world. So they just lived in the caves around the Dead Sea. And uh, there they just prayed and praised God. And then they read the Bible and they copied the Bible all the way. They became the Essenes. John the Baptist was known as uh, an Essene. As this passage shows, God considers his worshipers so highly. He calls his worship place the beautiful land, and his worshipers the host of the heavens, and his servants the starry host. The expressions are really amazing. These expressions show, uh, show how precious and beautiful they were in God's eyes. Then why did God allow such a terrible persecution occur in Jerusalem. 
Why did he hand over, uh, hand them over to such an evil man? Verse 12 shows us the reason, saying, because of rebellion, the host of the saints and the daily sacrifice were given over to it. Because of rebel rebe rebellion. English Standard Version translates this as, and the host <clears throat> and a host will be given over to it together with the regular burnt offering because of transgression. Also in verse 14, we see the expression, then the sanctuary will be reconsecrated, showing us earnest desire for his temple, temple to be consecrated. The reason was because of their transgression, their disobedience. They were beautiful people in God's eyes, the host of the heavens. But in their life, there was sin. They were corrupt also. They just went through the motion. And they lived a sinful life. The Greek culture was uh, uh, introduced and they were enjoying all those things, even on the Sabbath. When things went well, they forgot about God and indulged themselves into just pleasure-seeking or easy-going life. As a result, they had sin problems. They had the sins. God's people should live uh, uh, in obedience to God's words. In the whole world, on, there is only one group of people who can obey God's words. Who are they? Those who believe in Jesus Christ. Those who know their God. Unbelievers, can they obey God's command? No. No one else but God's people. So it is God's people's divine responsibility and privilege to obey God's commands and live according to God's will and purpose. But the but when God's people sin, when their transgression reaches the limit, God disciplines them with the challenges and difficulties. It is our nature that whenever we become successful or enjoy some prosperity, we become proud and self-indulgent then very easily God is being pushed away from the center of our hearts. Instead, other things occupy our hearts, such as money, or fame, or family life, or human recognition, or even pleasures. The symptom of such change is that suddenly people become so concerned about how others think of them, or how others see them. Instead, how God may uh, see them. God disciplines those whom he loves so that their hearts may be purified and restored with a love for him and thereby his sanctuary may be reconsecrated. When such difficulties or hardships arise, we must remember God's unchanging love and plan for his worshipers. God wants us to be re-consecrated. God never wants us to live in sin. That's why God disciplines. And when we recognize this, we quickly turn to God in repentance and dedicate ourselves to him completely. 